Hey y'all, welcome back to the Shepherd of Hermits class and we're starting at Similitudes 5. Similitudes 5. And we're talking about a true fast and the rewards of it. Alright, Similitudes 5 of a true fast and the rewards of it. Starting here, verse 1, it says, As I was fasting and sitting down in a certain mountain and giving thanks unto God for all these things that he had done unto me, behold, I saw a shepherd who was wont to converse with me, sitting by me, and saying unto me, What has brought thee hither thus early in the morning? I answered, Sir, today I keep a station. So at verse 1 we're seeing where Hermas and the shepherd are just basically meeting and greeting each other, and the shepherd is asking him, uh, Why are you here so early, and what are you doing? Yeah, now, what is this station part? Position, place, post, posting, class, rank, location, situation? I don't know. Why would he call it a station? I don't know. Well, the word station is only used in scripture one time that I could I could find in um, the concordance, and it did it referred to, like, as of a place. It didn't refer to what... Um, a fast. Okay. Now, now, it's, like you said, it's been a long time since you did four. So maybe you ought to talk about who this is that's talking with him. Who, who is this shepherd individual to bring everybody back up to speed? Well, the shepherd is the angel of repentance. Okay. And he is with Hermas, and he um, comes in, and he speaks to Hermas, and he teaches him things about uh, commands. He teaches him um how to uh, live unto the Father and things of that nature. So, uh, okay. So the her so the shepherd is kind of like a teacher in this book. Yes. And right now he's going to teach Hermas about uh, fasting. He's going to teach him about fasting, and you're going to be amazed that the fasting that we are doing is not necessarily the fasting that the Father requires of us. What do you mean the fast that we are doing? Well, we mostly uh, our fasting is. In the quote unquote Christian world is abstaining from food. Okay, and he's saying that, that that ain't quite what we're expected to do. Well, there's other parts to it. Okay, other parts to it. Okay, well, let me go on. Verse 2 says, He answered, What is a station? I replied, It is a fast. He said, What is a fast? Now, this is the angel talking. I answered, I fast as I been wont to do. Ye know not, said he, what it is to fast unto God, nor is this a fast which ye keep, profiting nothing with God. So in uh, verse 2, the angel is asking him what is he doing, and he's also letting him, Hermes is telling him that he's fasting. And the angel is saying, the fast that you are keeping, it profits nothing. Nothing. Well, no, be careful. He says profit. Profiting nothing with God. Profiting nothing with God, yes. It now, does profit some, but yeah. it profits nothing with God. The, the way I understand the fast when you abstain from food, it gives you a heightened sense of awareness. It makes you, it kind of open up um, some communication pathways, help you think a little bit better, and that kind of thing. But what he's saying here is, you, if, if, you know, and we know the scripture to be true, but what he's saying here is that type of fast may benefit you, but it doesn't have, it doesn't do anything as far as the Lord is concerned. Correct. You know, when you, when you said that about how it opens, gives you a heightened sense of awareness. Well, you know, when you eat a lot, you become sluggish and, you know, you, lethargic. Yeah, and, lethargic. And you just really, you want to go, go to sleep or just lay around and chill out. So, you know, it's just the opposite effect. When you're abstaining from food, it gives you, like you said, that awareness. Yeah, keen, makes you keen. Uh, they, the animals, they, they use it by default, like a lion or a tiger or something out there in the woods. When it, the hungrier it gets, the more dangerous it becomes. It's thinking clearer, it's, it's, it's hearing stuff, it's, it's paying attention more, it's, 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 um, it's at the, the top of his game. Whereas after he's just ate the antelope, you might not be able to get that thing to move at all. Right. Just like a, um, I guess like a snake. Yeah. Like yeah. a snake. A snake will eat something he'll lay there in that same spot for a long time, weeks. Right. All right, verse 3 says, Sir, said I, what makes you speak thus? He replied, I speak it because it is not the true fast which you think that you keep. But I will show you what that is, which is a complete fast, and acceptable unto God. Okay, so three just uh, further exp 
explains that he's telling him that it's not a true fast that he's keeping. So the angel is going to help Hermes out, help us out with what it, what it, what a real fast looks like. Yeah, actually, it tells us in uh, scripture in Isaiah what a true fast is, and Hermes is so good about just bringing out scripture to us with everyday life. Well, let let me go over here to Isaiah and see what it says. All right, let's look over here at Isaiah 58, see what you're talking about. Any particular verse or what? Well, let's start at verse 3. We're going to find it in actually verse 5, but let's start at verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, they said, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou keepest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye pleasure and exact all of your labors. Okay, so who is this talking here? Do you remember? This is the Father. This is uh, God talking. So he's telling them, you know, he said, we fasted and he gave no account. But it looks like he goes here says, behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure. It means you find pleasurable stuff to do on your fast and you exact all of your labors, meaning you're going to work. Right. You're not really fasting if you're partaking in pleasure and, and doing labor. Okay. Verse 4 says, behold. Ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Right, right. He's telling them, well, basically, that they're just doing the fast wrong, that they're fasting uh, out of anger, and they're fasting um, They're fasting with wickedness. They're doing wicked, wicked things during their fast. And five is the one you say you're most interested in. It says, is this such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush or to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? Well, this is physical stuff. This is humbling ourselves. Uh, you know, when we afflict our soul, we humble ourselves. When we bow down our head, um, when we put on um, sackcloth and spread ashes, this is humbling ourselves. Going on to 6, he'll tell you exactly what the true fast that he will have us to do. Yeah, I see that. He says, is not this the fast that I have chosen? So this is the fast that he's actually chosen. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Okay, if you can read on to number seven. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh? It's saying that, that we are what? To to give give bread to the hungry, mm -hmm. to bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, so we bring the poor to our house. You remember where the... Uh they would bring people who would come to a sojourn over or were traveling. They would say, well, we'll sleep out of the street. And it was like, no, don't sleep out of the street. You come and, you know, you stay with us. Talking so people, about would, Abraham yeah, people, and yeah, people would lodge with each other. They wouldn't have their brothers sleeping in a hotel or, you know, other places where they could stay with them. So, okay. uh, but this is, but this is talking about poor. Well, and I don't know if this one is, yes, yeah, it's poor that are cast out. So, the poor may be strangers. The poor may right. be people, you know, homeless people, you know, not necessarily friends or family, but, you know, people that you may not know or may not can do anything for you. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. So part of the fast is giving people clothes. Giving and, people clothes, food, shelter, clothing. Okay. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. And this sounds like that you got to be with your kids be with your uh your brothers be with your sisters be with your your uh your 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 quote unquote tribe be with your your people well this is a very good find stacy because it like you said it goes right along with what hermes is about to tell us right all right, right. You, you ready to get back into hermes yep all right harker said he the lord does not desire such a needless fast for by fasting in this manner thou advances nothing in righteousness Okay, so he's telling Hermits to listen that the fast of abstaining from food is um, needless. Needless as far as righteousness. Remember, it does have benefits. It right. does have, and we, we, we cannot put the, the fast away and say that it has no benefits. But what Hermits is trying to say is, or what he's saying is that it advances nothing in righteousness. Right, right. 
So you may be abstaining from food, you may be getting other benefits, but it ain't helping us as far as righteousness is concerned. Yeah. It's kind of like a selfish fast. Yeah, and that's what, yeah. So in this we'll see that there, uh, um, it's a personal fast. Fast, abstaining from food and water is a personal fast. a personal fast. fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. But the true fast is this. Do nothing wickedly in thy life. But serve God with a pure mind and keep his commandments and walk according to his precepts, nor suffer any wicked desire to enter into thy mind. Well, that's going back to what Isaiah is saying about how you shouldn't do uh, allow wickedness, you know, to come up on you um, uh, to uh, serve, serve the father with a pure mind and keep his commandments, keep his statutes, keep his precepts. Okay. And this is a uh, this is a fast that will profit you something if you want to receive some receive something from the Father. Uh, these this is a fast that will profit you to uh, get the ball rolling. Okay, now but he's going to give more detail than this, right? Right. right. Because he's saying do nothing wickedly in our life. <laughs> okay. Um, we we I guess when we think of fasting, we don't think of the whole life. I guess we'd be thinking about dying if we was thinking about not eating the whole life. But this other kind of fast we can, you know, do no wickedly that whole life. He says, but serve God with a pure mind. And this is really, and keep his commandments. So keeping his commandments is a part of the fast. Keeping his commandments is a part of the fast. Yeah. And walking according to his precepts. precepts. And, okay. not, and suffer not any wicked desire, wicked thoughts to enter into your mind. Right, it is talking about Isaiah. And then y'all jump back over there at Isaiah and, and look look at it again. Um, but we're going to move on. Uh, 6 says, But trust in the Lord, that if thou dost these things, and fearest him, and abstaineth from every good work, thou shalt live unto God. Yeah. You want to talk about that? We trust in the Lord? Oh, well, let's well, see. Well, it's just part, it's part of the things that's required. It's well, part it's of trust in the, the Lord. Commandment. Yeah, trust in the Lord, fear him, and abstain from every every evil work. I mean, it seems like this doing evil uh, and staying away from evil has a lot to do with this, this yeah. true fast. Yeah, and, and like you said, we never really thought about fasting in this way before. You know, it was abstaining from food. Now you're abstaining from a whole lot of stuff. Evil works and, you know, wicked desires and... Bad things thoughts. of this world, bad thoughts. Yeah, so it's a whole totally different kind of fast. He says, If thou do this, thou shalt perfect a great fast and an acceptable one unto the Lord. So that's a summation of all the things that he's saying. I mean, we're going to talk about it some more, but he's saying, you know, the uh, abstaining from the evil thoughts, uh, not doing wicked, bringing your brother the food, clothing, and shelter. Uh, trusting in the Lord, fearing Him, and abstaining from every evil work. He said, if you do these things, you should perfect a great fast. 